Again, we follow divine service, setting three, starting on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Nay, heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And to the of my sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father.
that let this grant that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and
But everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the plank that is in your own eye? Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We continue now with sharing our Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand
from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this fourth Sunday after Trinity is our gospel reading from Luke chapter 6. Therefore, be merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Well, that's easy for him to say, isn't it? Mercy comes naturally to God. It is his defining characteristic. Literally, we have in so many Psalms, again and again, his mercy endures forever. Not so for the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve. We who are still infected by their curse. The devil has taught us to stand up for ourselves and defend our rights. He has taught us to calculate, to manipulate with dishonesty, to mislead by half-truths, and to plot our deceptions. Pretendably, pious advisors preach to us, God helps those who help themselves. Of course, that's not God's word, but Benjamin Franklin. This really is all nothing more than a rehash of the seduction back in Eden. Go ahead, take the fruit. God didn't really mean it. Only you know what's good for you. It's just a sly way of saying, take what you want. Look after number one. You have to help yourself. God cannot be trusted to take care of you. Sadly, the father of lies has begotten children of lies. He does not love you, nor is he happy or even truly powerful. The devil is a wretched, disgusting creature full of agony and hatred, suffering for his rebellion. And the students are no better off than their teacher. You won't find happy, satisfied people in crack houses or in brothels or on the payroll of the mafia. It's a trap, a vicious cycle, a torture existence. Honor among thieves has got to be one of the biggest lies on. And yet we, the decent middle class, good Midwest, church-going folk, we've lusted for it. We have wanted to run wild and free without a single thought of cost or consequence, indulging every dark fantasy and acting every base desire. We need because that is the way of death. The so-called pleasures of the flesh are not really pleasant. Just picking one, for instance, let's look at drunkenness. Now, I don't mean having a glass of wine at a dinner party or sharing a beer while watching the Buckeyes, okay? That's not what I mean. I mean getting drunk. Where is the pleasure of drunkenness? Is it in the puking, the stumbling, the drooling, the inability to speak coherently, laughing like an imbecile, the hangover, the money down the drain, or the humiliation? Hmm? Which is it? Where exactly is the fun of selfish sin? Your eternal destiny is at stake. Is it really worth it? And yet, time and again, pick which sin we have succumbed. We have fallen prey to a temptation that shouldn't even be tempting. How pathetic is that? Oh, and then our darker fantasies. Those we mostly don't actually act out. 
but we still want to. Those are even worse. I mean, would you really want to risk the health of your spouse? Are you prepared to face your children? We need to repent. These things, they're not satisfying. You are not missing out on anything, despite what the devil tries to tell you. Your father, not, not the devil, not the devouring father of lies, but your father, who begot you anew in the waters of holy baptism, the father of your Lord Jesus Christ, is merciful. He does not punish you for your sins or the secret thoughts of your heart. He rescues you from that death and despair. For while there is only one who is begotten of the Father, only one who can rightfully address Him in that way, only one who actually came down from heaven, it is He, Jesus Christ Himself, who bids you to stand and call His Father your Father. He says... Your Father is merciful. He teaches you to pray with boldness and confidence as dear children to their dear Father. That's that for you. You are to address God as though you were His only begotten. The apple of His eye, His beloved in whom He is well pleased, His anointed one, without sin, without shameful past, without inside guilt and hidden thoughts, as though you were perfectly holy, abundantly gracious, and merciful. And that is precisely where you see the mercy of your Father. He accepts you for the sake of the Son as sons and daughters, the children of His adopted, forgiving love. He lays your guilt upon the Son and sends it to death on the cross. He removes you from this horrid, killing world of self-preservation, tooth and claw, lies and power struggles. Then He raises His Son from your death. And gives to you the reward of his righteousness. And then, at his merciful bidding, you stand in the stead of Christ before the Father. Before your Father. You are now innocent, righteous, and blessed. You also stand in the stead of Christ before your neighbors. Even as he bids you to come and receive his mercy, so you bid others to come and receive his mercy through you, with you. He has removed the plank of sin from your eye with forgiveness. Now you can see clearly and remove the speck in your brother's eye with that same forgiveness. For Christ died for all. He would have all people turn and be saved. Planks and specks are not removed by rules and laws and punishment, nor by education and discipline nor by ignoring or even tolerating them, but only by mercy, by sacrifice, by substitution. In Christ, you shall not be judged. You shall not be condemned. Mercy and forgiveness will be given to you. The perfect, steadfast, unfailing love of God in Christ in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your mouth. And then from there, into your bosom. The Lord 
himself is present here and now for you in his body and his blood. It is the meal of mercy. It is prepared for you from eternity. Come, eat, be satisfied. Now I know that many of you remember a time back when the sacrament of Holy Communion was shared far less often than we have it now. But believe it or not, there used to be a time when all of our churches offered the body and blood of Christ Jesus for the forgiveness of sins, for the strengthening of faith, and for the fellowship of God's children on each and every single Lord's Day, and on every holy day, and whatever else it was desired. It was given often because it was desired often, because people knew they needed it often. Many of our sister congregations have gone back to that ancient practice of God's meal of mercy every Lord's Day. And just me, the time has come for us to think about it too. Our merciful Father gathers us together for our Sabbath, our rest. Here, here is rest, not for the wicked, but for the forgiven. Here is where peace is given for rebels. In his blessed sacrament, he will raise you up. He will remove the plague from your eye. He will restore your vision. And he will make you one again with both the church on earth and with all the faithful who are already with him in heaven. <laughs> Your Father is altogether and forever merciful. He does not judge you by what you do, but by what Jesus has done for you. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now with singing together our offertory, beginning on the bottom, bottom of page 192, creating the Please rise.
Grant and preserve to your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Bless Matthew, our synod president, Kevin, our district president, Richard, our circuit visitor, and all our pastors and missionaries. Especially do we pray for Jonathan Roosh being ordained and installed into the Office of Holy Ministry at Trinity Lutheran Church in Toledo this afternoon. Help all who hear the word, rightly to understand, and truly to believe it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send laborers into your harvest, and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church, and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ and help us to fight the good fight of faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bestow your grace on all nations on, of the earth. Bless especially our country its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Donald, our president, Michael, our governor, Christina, our mayor, and all who legislate, administrate, and judge our laws. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places. We commend to you the education of our children, so that they may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue and thus bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the distressed and those who sorrow. Bless all those who defend us and keep them safe. Especially do we pray for our local law enforcement and Kelly, Sharon, Megan, Samantha, and John in our sheriff's office. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept, we implore you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as our humble service. We offer thanksgiving for the blessings you give to us, rejoicing in all your gifts of life, especially Glenna, Greg, and all those celebrating birthdays, as well as Martin and Sharon, and all those celebrating anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Grant your Holy Spirit to comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially as we pray for Jim, Patricia, Mary, and their ongoing needs. Mark, Barbara, Tony, and Mara, and their afflictions. All your people on earth struggling with the pandemic. All in our land concerned with both safety and justice. All those who travel this holiday weekend, they may return home safe and secure. All those from our own midst who are recovering from recent surgeries, including Gordon and Angela. And all those we remember now in our hearts. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow, and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, 
before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now on page 194 with the service of the Sabbath. The Lord be with you.
We continue now with singing together the Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon, as found beginning on page 199.
Uh, a reminder to you that we are still videotaping the services. So they are still be, they're still available. You can find it, you can find links to them on the sermon spot on the, our church's website. I post them on the church's Facebook page. You can go to our, our church's uh, YouTube channel from any of the videos that you've gotten links to before you. From there you can connect on over to, to the, the church's YouTube channel. All the videos for all the services from back in, in Lent when we got started with, with, with all the stuff in, in lockdown um, are, are there and, and they'll continue to be there. So anytime you want to share with a little friend or go back and, and, and hear a message again or, or just want to sing some hymns, you know, you can fast forward. You know, and, and, and that's just to make sure you know that that's still there for, for, for what's going on.